Buffers are weak acids or weak bases that uh, are used in pretty much every biochemical experiment to prevent the pH from changing. But they only work within about one pH unit of their pKa. So we need to understand why this is. So let's just look at a, a typical buffer. So here's a weak acid. It's a weak acid because it can, it can dissociate to form H plus and A minus there. So this here is what's technically known as the conjugate acid, and this here is the, the, the conjugate base there. And the pKa is a measure of how much it dissociates. Um, let's just define that. So it's connected to the Ka, the dissociation constant. So the dissociation constant, of course, is equal to the concentration of the, of the products, H plus A minus, there, divided by the concentration of the reactants. There. And the pKa is simply the log 10 of this. So if we choose a buffer with a pKa of around the pH that we want to keep the pH set to, there, then it'll be an effective buffer, no matter whether we add acid or whether we add base. Let's look at why that is. So we need to invoke the hensel hasselbach equation. So pH is equal to the pKa plus the log 10 of A minus divided by HA. And let's imagine that we wanted to keep the pH at, at 7. And we chose a buffer that had a pKa of 7. Well, that would mean that this log 10 term, this term here, would have to equal 0. Now, uh, the log 10 of 1 is equal to 0. So that's going to mean that when the pH is equal to the pKa, there's equal amounts of the conjugate base and the conjugate acid there. So no matter whether we add base or we add acid to our solution, the pH is going to stay the same. Let's imagine the situation where the pH was 8. The pKa is still 7. Well, that means that this log 10 term here is going to be equal to 1. Now, the log 10 of 10 is equal to 1. So that means that when the pH is one pH unit above the pKa, there's tenfold more of this form than there is of this form. In this case, it's going to mean that the buffer is quite effective when we add acid to the system. But if we add base to the system, it's going to be not a good buffer at all because there's going to be very, very little of HA for it to react with. So that's not going to be, that's not going to be so good. On the other hand, let's look at what happens if we drop down to 6. So if the pH was 6 and the pKa was 7, well, that's going to mean that this log 10 term here is going to be equal to minus 1. 6 equals 7 minus 1. So the log 10 of 1 tenth, 0 0.1, is equal to minus 1 there. So in this situation, where the pH is lower than the pKa, we've got much more of this form than we do of this form here. So it's going to be buffering OK in one direction, but not in the other direction. And if we went even further than that, if we dropped the pH down to 5 there and we used a buffer with a pKa of 7, well, that's going to mean that this log 10 term here is 1 over 100. So there's 100 times more of this form of the conjugate acid than there is of the conjugate base. So there's very, very little of the conjugate base. So in that case, it's going to be almost completely useless buffer at that pH there. Uh, so that's why it's always important to choose a buffer with a pKa around the same as the pH that you're trying to keep the, the experiment at.